Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HeartofCP.com and what we've got here today is the MSI MEG MEG X399 Creation Motherboard for the new Threadripper CPUs and we're going to show you how to install those kind of start to finish uh, whether you're getting prepped to do air cooler or water cooler. So obviously you're going to need motherboard and obviously you're going to need a Ryzen CPU. Your Ryzen CPU will come with this Torx head wrench, which is actually a torque wrench. We'll show you how that works. And we've used this motherboard before. We've been testing with a lot. We've had really good results with it. So I've dressed it back up to how exactly it comes out of the box. And we're going to show you how everything goes here. So this is a look at our TR4 socket down on our motherboard. And you will see we've got exposed uh, screws, fasteners right here. We have three of them. This one's labeled one, this one's labeled two, this one's labeled three. So to open this up, we take our tool, insert it there, we can turn it backwards until you hear it kind of click. That means it's out of that thread. We're going to do the same thing over here. It's out. Now we're going to come over here and get this last one. Okay, now we see our socket retainer is loose. So that comes up, that's spring loaded. And now you see we've got this cover down in here. So you see these little blue tabs. These will be different whether they're on the uh, Lotz socket or uh, the Foxconn socket. So you can get in there and you can grab these, give them a little pull, just pull gently. That comes up. And now our carrier is moved. Once our carrier's up, we can reach in here and pull this little cover out. Come straight out. You can put that to the side. So now we're ready to insert our CPU. So here's our Ryzen Threadripper CPU. This happens to be the 2950X we're working with right now. So this opens up real easy. Exposes our CPU. All you have to do is lift in and pull it straight out. Easy peasy. Now we want to insert the CPU exactly back down into the carrier as it came out. So you can do this with one hand actually. So you'll see on the arms, of, the arms of the carrier right there you get two little detents that this needs to slide in under. So you can do it wrong and actually kick it up and try to force it over there but you're going to feel some resistance when you do that. So just let it let gravity hold it and slide it in. You can look and you can see right there as it slides down. So it slides down. And there's also two detents at the bottom. So you give a little push. Now we know we're in there. You can see these uh, little legs down here at the bottom. Everything fits together right. And it won't slide any further down. You can give it a little pressure. So now we've got our CPU and our carrier. We do have on the Lotz socket and the Foxconn sockets, we have this uh, cover down here at the bottom that protects all of our contact points. So you'll see on here it says remove on two sides. You can grab it by your hand and simply give it a little tug and it comes right off. Make sure when you do that, you pull it straight off because these 4100 pins that are down on here do not like to be disturbed in any way, shape or form. So now to put our CPU down in the socket, you want to put your, both your fingers or finger each on the blue tabs and simply push down evenly. You'll feel a little resistance. You're just going to push down and you'll feel it click into place. It still has a little bit of play on it, but not much. All right, so now we got our socket down. We're going to take our retainer, push it down. We're going to start back with number one over here. Insert a tool in there. You can turn it backwards again a little bit till you hear the click. Now we can see our thread. All right, so we get a turn on it, half a turn. We're going to do the same thing on both these other corners. All right, so now we know our threads have started at all, all three points. 
That'll generally make this install easier. That's not exactly how they say to do it, but that is how I do it. Sometimes on the number one spot over here, you might have to use a lot of pressure, okay? But you can press down on that and without, you can press down on that without worrying about hurting it, as long as the tool doesn't slide out of the head. So we're coming up to where the torque wrench is about to do its job. You'll feel it get stiff. Now watch the head and listen. You don't want to turn it any further after that. We're going to do that at all three points. So there we go. Our processor is now perfectly installed. It's torqued to spec. Everything should be good to go. So let's show you how we put some Tim down on this. So this is the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper. It's probably the cooler you're probably most fam familiar with when it comes to uh, Threadripper 2 because Cooler Master worked with AMD to design this cooler. Um, when you purchase it, it comes with a Tim pre-applied. So all you have to do is actually set the cooler down and install it, and we'll show you that in a minute. But for those of you that want to use your own Tim, or if you screwed up the Tim that was on this, which happens all the time, because it just does, people set them down and do stupid things with them or stick their finger in them. Not that I've ever done that. But we're going to show you how to get two different kinds of Tims down onto the Threadripper itself. First thing we're going to do to get our Tim or our Tim ready for a install is I'm going to get some lint-free cloth, some isopropyl alcohol. And we're gonna clean the surface off really good. Your processor's new, this probably isn't that big a deal, but you can see where I'm already, I'm pulling up some old Tim off there, even though it looks clean. So we'll get that done. You wanna make sure you don't have any particulate or anything left on the surface of this. If you want to, you can always take a little canned air zip that off so if you're using a white type of tim odds are it's not that viscous and this is kind of a rule of thumb you're going to, have to see what you have uh, most of you won't need to be laying any tim down at all because already it's like pre-applied but if you do have to lay some tim down for this processor with the less viscous tim like we're using here The X seems to work really, really well in getting us good patterns going back across. So that's really all you need to do. Remember, don't, don't worry about wasting Tim because this is going to flow. And even when it flows, none of it is, uh, none of it's electrically conductive or at least the ones I use are not. So you're not having to worry about that spilling off. It's not going to leak anywhere. It's not that big a deal. You want to make sure you have enough down to flow properly over your heat spreader to, uh, to mate up with your cooling device. So if we're putting down our more viscous Tim, this is kind of in the realm of don't do this at home. We're gonna take a stick of RAM, we're gonna insert it back down on the board, we're gonna power everything on. And I'll show you why in a minute. We're using a Prolimitech PK1 thermal compound because of its high uh, heat transfer abilities. We like using it. And this is very, very thick, extremely thick, especially at room temperature. So what we do is we lay down a dot, lay down a dot, another dot in the middle. So this is where this breaks into void your warranty category. I'm gonna turn the board on. And what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the CPU's heat to heat up this thermal compound on here to make it spread easier. These CPUs do not heat up tremendously quickly, so it's not, it's not that risky. And obviously your finger's down on there. Now you'll see it's getting hot. It's starting to spread a lot easier. So we're going to work it around. Once we get a good spread. Okay, it's getting nice and hot now. I'm going to power the board down. Get a paper towel here. So now we've got the Tim nice and hot. See how easy it spreads? What I'm doing is I'm wiping the excess 
off my finger cut. So what we're trying to do here, see how thin it's already getting right there? We're trying to get a layer down as thin as possible. Actually, put some more heat back in it. I'm gonna leave my finger on there just so I can gauge how hot that surface is getting. All right, so it's getting hot enough there that I don't want my finger on there anymore. Power the board down. That's right. You can see how thin we're getting it there. I'm not worried about the extreme edges. A lot of people would like to do this with a credit card or a razor blade. You can see all the excess we pulled off. I'm gonna take my finger cut off. Get that out of the way. I just I, I just like doing it this way. Obviously, it's a void your warranty kind of thing. So there's where our thread ripper dies are. And I'm obviously I got a little bit different angle on this than you do. And this is the 2950, so we have two active die packages down on the substrate. So the black dies are what represent active dies on this processor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our Tim back. I'm going to place another tiny dot. Not much. Right over our two active dies are. Now if this was the 2990WX, I'd go ahead and put two more dots over the other two active dies, but that's not the case this time. So I've literally done hundreds and hundreds of these installs, and this is what has worked best for us. So let's set our cooler down real quick. I want to show you this. So there's where our, our dots of uh, Tim we placed are. And you can see how those are already spreading out over exactly where those active cores are. So having the, the, uh, the thin layer of Tim down on the in integrated heat spreader lets that spread more efficiently and it'll give us better cover. I've tested this many times, it's worked really well. So this is where our install is gonna get a little different from a person to person. So if you're doing a water block, you'll have uh, your post, Mount it here on some models. Some models screw directly into these posts. Kind of wanted to do this to show you exactly where those are. So you got the two back here and you have the two up there. The uh, Cooler Master Wraith Ripper does not require that. So we're going to take those off. And now let me show you how to install the Wraith Ripper. So here again is our Wraith Ripper. I wanted to show you how we see the spread of the Tim. On that too and remember if uh, this comes with a Tim pre-installed so it's not that big a deal so you have your two posts here that are closer together your two posts here that are further apart you simply want to position your cooler over hold it level eyeball one corner kind of tilt it back so you're not putting any pressure on the surface get that one lined up line your second one up and then let it drop forward so now we need our Phillips head screwdriver. You'll notice that you have these four Phillips head screws that go all the way through the body down onto the uh, motherboard. So we're gonna use the same kind of process we used with uh, the CPU screws. So the, here I'll be quiet so you can hear it. So we're gonna turn it backwards until we hear that thread seat down. There it is. Take a quarter turn, do the same thing over here. Quarter turn. We're using a crisscross pattern. Okay. I'm gonna go two turns. Two turns. Two turns. Two turns again. One, two, three. Take it up a notch. One, two, three. You can see the difference in height in these screws that these are countersunk. Two, three. Let's take a gauge there. One, two, three. Go back over here. 
So we're gonna continue that one start to seat. We're gonna go all the way. So I felt this one to tighten. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up diagonally from it. On the 2950X, I always tighten these two down first that are cross. Because remember, our active dies are on this corner and on this corner. And obviously that wouldn't pertain to doing a 2990WX. Feel that one getting tight. So there you go. They bottom out, they won't turn any further. You don't need to torque these hard. You don't need to tear that up, so don't worry about that. After that, we have a SATA power connection. We have a USB connection. And we have a four pin uh, fan connection, PWM fan connection, that's in the middle of here or rather in the middle of here this way. And uh, so all that controls your power and your RGBs and everything that lights up pretty here. So that's it. So this is the AMD Threadripper 2950X and 2990WX install. We just covered. Um, this is the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper Cooler that is probably gonna be most popular. One thing to remember right there is that inside RAM channel, you're gonna have a hard time getting a big stick of RAM in there. So you're probably, see it will not make it. It's not making that corner there. I know you can't see that on camera. You can get the second one from the inside out, but not the inside one. So if, you, if you've got eight sticks of RAM, make sure you install the first, the, the stick closest to the socket first on both sides. This is Kyle Bennett with HardoCP.com.